Hey, what's up? This is Carl's Collects Comics, and I'm back with another video. And this is part four of my Comic Collecting for Beginners video series, where I'm going to be talking about how to maintain balance in comic collecting. So stay tuned. Hey, so what's up? It is Carl's Collects Comics, and this is part four of my Comic Collecting for Beginners video series. This four part series is focused on tips and practical helps and hints and strategic thoughts and steps to take as you get started in your journey in the hobby of comic book collecting. So I'm excited about sharing this with you and I hope that it's gonna help out a lot with, um, with you know, as you've learned some of these other uh, thoughts that I've, I've laid out, I'm hoping that this is gonna help with maintaining balance in life as you add the hobby of comic book collecting to um, the overall mix because as any comic collector will let you know it can easily become all-consuming take up space take up time and definitely take up money so I want to make sure and give you and leave you with these three tips this is why I ended the series with this particular video because I think this is the best thing I can leave with you. And these three tips, they're not steps this time, they're tips. Um, I think these are gonna help. So let's get started with them. Tip number one is to remember that it's for fun. Remember that comic collecting, the hobby, is for fun. All right, you know, it should be fun because it's a hobby. Um, it should be a release from anxiety, not something that produces new anxiety. Um, I've seen a lot of collectors fall into the pit of trying to get steals and deals um, rather than just a competitive price for the book that they really want. Um, you know, one example for me was a recent pickup um, for a book that just came out um, called Primos. And this is Primos number one. This is the ratio incentive. Um, and, you know, I really wanted the book because the story appeals to me. You know, it's, a, it's right up my alley. It's exactly in my wheelhouse. Um, it's Hispanic superheroes with uh, power sets that are drawn from their culture. And so I ended up buying two copies. All right. I think I ended up spending about 20 bucks each on them. That was the maximum amount that I was willing to pay for my personal collection to have them in there because I really enjoy the book. I really, it really appeals to me. It lines up, like I said, right in my wheelhouse and up my alley. Um, so that's why I wanted to add it. wasn't in high demand. wasn't a hot book that you know skyrocketed in price and then came back down. Um, you know, did I get a crazy good deal? No, absolutely not. Um, like I said, I paid twenty dollars each. To get them because they were there weren't a lot of them there because there wasn't a ton of people hunting for them I don't think um, but you know was it fair market value yeah I believe that it was um, you know and and it might not even hold it you know they might not even hold their value even though it's a really cool series and it's uh, it's it's a ratio incentive which means they're more rare um, but I'm okay with that also. Uh, because I'm making this purchase simply for the fun of the hobby. And that's the encouragement I want to give you with this first tip, is that remember that this hobby is for fun. There should be, like a healthy comic book collection, there should be some books in there that might not hold much monetary value, um, as I covered in, previous video, in a previous video, but it's there just because it brings personal enjoyment. And that's okay to have those books in there. I buy those books all the time, books that may not ever do anything, but I really enjoy them. So that's tip number one. Remember that it's for fun. Tip number two is keep your priorities in order. I've shared previously about the investment book that I sold to pay for a family vacation. Um, it was an Edge of Spider-Verse number two, the first appearance of uh, Spider-Gwen. It was a CGC 9.6 with white pages. And yeah, I made money on the deal because I think I max had I had less than two hundred dollars into the book, and pay and, and ended up selling it for I think around seven hundred, give or take. Um, but yes, it's you know it's gone up in value um, in the eight months or so since I sold it. So I did while I did make some money on it, I didn't get 
yeah, I didn't squeeze every drop out of that one. But part of maintaining balance in the comic collecting hobby means that uh, you maintain a healthy perspective about where and how the hobby fits into the rest of life. Um, just like any good thing, too much can be an unhealthy, an unhealthy thing. For me, you know, as I've shared before, um, being able to sell that book and pay for that family vacation, those memories with my wife, my son, and my dog um, can never be, uh, I, I never could, I can never go back to that part of, that, that, uh, that time period when son and dog were that age and my wife and I were the age that we were. We grabbed the moment, it meant more to me than, you know, the comic books. And so I feel like that has always been something that I look at as an example for myself, not saying others should look at it as, as an example, but for myself, I keep that as kind of a guidestone to say, hey, there are things that are more important than the hobby. And, you know, that's keeping your priorities in order. Um, you know, we don't want this to be the only thing that we ever do. Um, you know, at the expense of time with our spouse or children or parents or nieces, nephews, grandparents, or even pets. Um, just like any good, you know, um, they're all precious parts of life that are also finite. And we need to use our time resources wisely. Additionally, um, financial priorities are also important. Um, we don't want to rack up a ton of credit card debt that's going to destroy any comic value gains with interest charges, annual charges, etc. We don't want to neglect things like a new shirt or shoes, um, an unexciting car repair, or even a nice trip or a night out um, just to buy some more comic books. You know, and this is a side note, you know, hey, if, if, you're, um, if you're single, and maybe you live alone, um, celebrate that, okay? Um, get out, take a walk, enjoy the air, take in a nearby park or wilderness area. Um, comics are a hobby meant for enjoyment, but it, also, but it definitely has its place, and that place is not meant to push everything else out of the way. And just because you're in a season of singleness, or maybe you don't have a family there that, that resides directly with you, um, that that doesn't mean just completely surround yourself with comics. Get out there and enjoy it. I, I love to see some of the people in the comic community who get out and go on, you know, fishing trips or road trips or vacations or museums or any of those numbers of things, even if it's just going outside and taking a walk in your backyard. Um, get out there and, and squeeze a little bit extra out of life and the comics will be there when you get back. <clears throat> Um, you know, even if you love comics, that's cool, but make sure that you're also getting out, um, even if it's to a local comic shop or a convention or even seeing a comic book movie every once in a while, instead of just always having the comics there at home with you. You know, and that's just some friendly advice from someone who's also ha who also has the same tendencies. Um, as an introvert, I can just sit here and, and spend hours just filing and bagging and boarding and um, organizing and hanging things up and putting things in, into a different section of the of the of the collecting cave, but um, there are things there are priorities that are more important than comic books. Um, tip number three, just want to share this: um, collect what you enjoy. Okay, collect what you enjoy. If you hear nothing else that I share with you during this entire video series. Let it be this one thing. Collect what you enjoy. What you enjoy. Um, you know, as I shared earlier, there's nothing wrong with making comic games or making the hobby pay for itself. That's a popular thing right now. But it's also a hobby, and the reality is that every healthy hobby has a cost to it. Um, if it's not money, it's usually time. It's going to, any healthy hobby is going to take up time and money. You can't fight that hobby to make it provide for itself otherwise it starts to become a business venture of some sort and that's going to completely eradicate the whole purpose of being in the hobby to begin with. Um, so if you're a new collector uh, make sure to start by collecting what you enjoy not what someone else tells you to. You'll be much happy for it in the end. 
quick example of that. Um, so at the time of the recording of this video, a series called Stray Dogs is one of the hottest series out there. Um, the original five issues came out and had tons of printings and variants and um, all kinds of, of neat homage covers to popular horror films. So when the two-part sequel inevitably came out, and it's actually a prequel series, but it was the two-part follow-up called Stray Dogs Dog Days came out, there must have been 75 plus covers per issue and there was two of them so that's just so much but the neat thing was you know I just told myself at the beginning of it I I, had, I said I'm going to just get um, a couple of the covers that I enjoy and those happen to be these two that I'm going to show you um, I, th I really I don't even think I got much more than these two this is issue one and two. It's a connecting cover, and it's just such a cool looking piece. And it's by the creators of the series. And even better, um, it's this was done for the SPCA of Los Angeles. To uh, it, all the proceeds from this book are going to that charity. So, what a neat thing! Just out of pure enjoyment. And uh, so I, you know, that was a, that was an example of me collecting what I enjoy and saying, you know what, there's all these other great homage covers, there's these ratio variants, variants, so on and so forth, but I'm not going to let myself get stressed out or try to collect every one and go broke trying to do that. I'm simply going to get the ones that I like. And man, it feels good to be able to do that. So hey, I'm glad that you tuned in for the fourth part of this video series, Comic Collecting for Beginners. I hope that you've watched all four videos and that it's given you a good place to start in the massive uh, hobby that we all end up loving. If you haven't already, make sure to like this video, leave a comment below because I will respond to each and every comment that is left on any of the videos. Um, Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so you'll know when new videos drop. I'm Carl's Collects Comics and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.